everyone and welcome back to my youtube channel if you're here for the first time hi my name is busa Mimoliayo and i am nigerian registered nurse and midwife i am also a united kingdom registered nurse in today's video i am going to be discussing nursing care plan we're going to go over the topic of the nursing care plan that we're going to be discussing we'll go over the objectives the nursing diagnosis the intervention scientific rationale and evaluation please note that this is basically an example to help you understand the nursing care plan so first let's have a review on the topic that we'll be discussing the nursing care plan today Today, we are going to be solving the nursing care plan for cerebrovascular accident, also known as a stroke, and sometimes it is called CVE, that is like an acronym for it. So for context, cerebrovascular accident is a sudden impairment of cerebral circulation in one or more blood vessels supplying the brain. So it has to do with blood supply to the brain. When one or more blood vessels supplying blood to the brain it has become shut off or impaired, a stroke can occur. There are various um, types of st stroke. You have the ischemic stroke and the hemorrhagic stroke. But we are just going to be basing our nursing care plan on the common things that happens with stroke. Now here is the scenario we'll be working with. Mr. Ajao, a 62-year-old male, was brought into the emergency department by his son after he was found on the floor unable to speak or move his right side. His vital signs on admission were blood pressure 180 100 millimeters of mercury, temperature 36.8 degrees Celsius, pulse 88 beats per minute, respiration 20 cycles per minute, SpO2 95%. He also has facial droop on the right side, making chewing and swallowing difficult. Now this scenario is actually made up and I highlighted some parts that will give us pointers to prob uh, probable nursing diagnosis that we can make, like the fact that he's unable to speak, unable to move his right side, the vital signs, obviously the blood pressure is pointing towards hypertension, and there's also a facial droop that is making chewing and swallowing difficult. Don't forget that during your exam, it is important to read the scenario very well and, you know, Check out for pointers towards your nursing diagnosis because most of the time the scenario is already going to tell you what the examiner expects you to write. Now let's go over the nursing diagnosis. For today's care plan, we are going to be working on three nursing diagnoses, which would consist of two actual diagnoses and one risk diagnosis. I have already highlighted the problem statements in green the etiology in brown and the evidence in red. So starting with the first one, impaired verbal communication related to injury to the speech center in the brain evidenced by aphasia. So it has already been stated in the scenario that Mr. Ajao is unable to speak. The second one is impaired physical mobility related to neuromuscular impairment evidenced by limited use of right upper and lower limbs the scenario also clearly stated that mr jawo cannot move uh, on his right side then the last one is risk for imbalance nutrition less than body requirement related to reduced ability to chew and swallow the scenario also pointed out the fact that mr jawo cannot eat or cannot chew or swallow easily so these three diagnoses were drawn directly from the scenario i am not saying that if you want to write an exam and they give you a nursing um, scenario on stroke this has to be the exact things you write on i am just taking into consideration the scenario that is in this example always remember this is an example now that we understand the nursing diagnosis how we came up with it the objectives and how it should be written let us go over the nursing intervention the scientific rationale and the evaluation of the care plan the first nursing diagnosis we're working on is of the impaired verbal communication and the objective is that within two to four days of intervention patients will demonstrate improved self-expression and decreased frustration with communication two to four days is actually quite realistic because the effects of the stroke on the speech center is actually 
uh, a lasting one. It, it usually takes a while. So two to four days for the patient to start demonstrating improved self-expression and decreased frustration with communication. I'm not saying that the patient will begin to talk within two to four days. I'm just saying that there will be improved measures of expressing themselves and they will not be frustrated when it comes to trying to communicate their needs or wants with other people. So always mind the way that you construct your objectives. Now here are the interventions and side from rationale. First, you want to assess the nature and severity of the patient's aphasia because you want to obtain baseline data and create management plan. You want to know the extent to which the patient cannot talk. Is it that the patient cannot talk at all, like no sound, or they are making sounds that are incoherent, or they are still able to like make some clear words. So you want to know the extent. Then the next thing is to obtain referral to a speech therapist. Now, speech therapist or speech and language therapist are professionals and they are experts when it comes to things like this. So it is only reasonable that you obtain a referral or you refer the patients and you know, ask them to come see the patients so that you can work on a management plan with them. So the scientific rationale is that the patient may need expertise of a specialist to facilitate ability to communicate. And it, it more or less gives like a multidisciplinary approach and an evidence-based approach to caring for the patient. Next thing is to ask the patient to repeat unclear words by speaking slowly in short phrases. So the patient may be trying to make a lot of sentences quickly the way they would do when they um, before the stroke episode. So when you try to encourage them to, you know, use shorter phrases and speak slowly, it makes it easier for them to communicate with other people. Then you, another thing is to ensure that the patient is always well rested. You know, the patient um, doesn't have a lot of people around them disturbing them from time to time. Like they take rest when they need it because fatigue actually affects their ability to communicate. That is a scientific rationale. Then you can also help the patient to create alternative methods of communication, like using flashcards for basic needs and non-verbal cues. Like you can create a lot of pictorial um, cards, maybe with food images, um, how to bathe and all those things that they will need to do daily. So maybe the patient can just flashcard, I'm hungry, and you know, okay, this patient is trying to say they are hungry. And maybe non-verbal cues like nodding, pointing, thumbs up when they want to communicate. And that's because non-verbal cues like pointing flashcards of basic needs or picture board may help communication and it, it would greatly reduce their frustration. So those are some interventions. And here is an evaluation for the first nursing diagnosis. After three days of intervention, patient demonstrated improved self-expression and decreased frustration with communication. Note that the time frame is still within what I wrote in the objectives. So always take note of that in your exams. The next nursing diagnosis we'll be working on is impaired physical mobility and the objective is that patient will begin to demonstrate techniques that promote ambulating and transferring within three to five days of nursing intervention. That means you are giving the patient three to five days to start demonstrating techniques that will promote like easy movement. That time frame is actually realistic. We're not saying they will start moving independently but they will start demonstrating the technique. So, it is very important that you know how to construct your objectives and make them realistic. So here are the nursing interventions and scientific rationale. First, you want to assess for subluxation of the shoulder. And you must tell the patient not to pull the affected arm. Like That means if there's the, the stroke is affecting the left side, the patient is not to pull the left arm and if it's the right side, the patient is not to pull the right arm. And for Mr. Jao's case, it is the right limbs that are affected so you want to always assess that right limb for subluxation and the issue with um stroke is that the affected arm um, once the shoulder um joints cannot or the shoulder muscles sorry cannot support the weakened arm it might cause the shoulder joints to actually separate so you want to always check for that and make sure that doesn't happen then the next thing is to teach methods for turning and moving using the stronger extremities to move the weaker extremities. So you want a massage to probably be turning by using the left hand to move the right hand and the left leg to like push the right leg. And this is because it will promote independence with some movements such as turning, like they can turn on their own with the use of the 
um, limbs that are that are not affected that way they don't feel like they're a burden onto anybody promoting independence will actually boost their mood and you know save that feeling of always be dependent on one person and then another thing is that you want to collaborate with physical therapy those are the physiotherapists the team to create a management plan because obviously these people are experts when it comes to management um, techniques like this and that's because you want to also create an evidence-based management plan with a multidisciplinary input the next thing is to position the patient in a correct alignment and provide a pillow or lab board for support you also encourage them to engage in active and passive range of motion exercise just to improve their muscle tone and that's because these measures will help the patient to maintain anatomic position like you don't want their bodies to now become distorted while you're trying to like get them better next thing is to encourage the patient to make a conscious attempt to look at extremities and check positions before moving so that they don't fall like to know the position of the affected arms and legs before moving so that they don't just trip and fall so it's very important so now let's go back to the evaluation for this nursing diagnosis and here is our evaluation that the patient began to demonstrate techniques that promotes ambulating and transferring after three days of nursing intervention Remember, always keep the time frame you wrote to your objectives in mind when writing your evaluation during exams. It must not exceed or be shorter than the time written in your objective to make it, you know, more realistic. The next nursing diagnosis we're working on is risks for imbalanced nutrition less than body requirements. The scenario pointed out that Mr. Ajao cannot chew and swallow easily. And we don't want a patient that has been admitted to the hospital to become malnourished during and even after admission. So our objective is that patient will begin to eat and maintain nutritional balance within three days of nursing intervention. Patient will begin to eat within three days of nursing intervention. Let's go over to the interventions and rationale. So the first thing we're doing is to assess the extent of chewing and swallowing difficulty because we want a baseline data and we also want to know how best um, our management or um, the most appropriate management plan for the patient. Then you also want to obtain a dietitian referral because you need an expert when it comes to things like this. Then with the help of the patients, create a meal plan, taking into consideration their food preferences as well as age appropriate nutritional requirements. So you want to create like a timetable for their food that will include food that the patient likes and would obviously want to eat, but that also contains the nutrients that they need based on their age and gender. So and the side for rationale is that having food that patients are familiar with in a meal plan makes it easier for them to eat. Then you also want to ensure that the meals are soft and in small quantities per ingestion and they should not eat in isolation. So small amounts per the time you are feeding them. So like small muscle or small spoons to feed them. And that's because you want to prevent choking or dangers associated with choking. If they eat in isolation and they choke and there's nobody there, then that's very dangerous. Finally, you also want to encourage patients to always communicate hunger or thirst outside meal times such as using a call bell flashcard or verbal communication because um b- maybe you're in a hospital now and meal times is like maybe 9 a.m 2 p.m and 7 p.m so outside those times if the patient feels hungry or thirsty the patient should know how to communicate so that the person doesn't sit there waiting for the next meal time before they get what they need so that the patient doesn't become malnourished and now the evaluation is that the patient began to eat and maintain nutritional balance after two days of nursing intervention always keep in mind the time frame in your objectives if you want to see more of my videos where i talk about nursing care plan of other conditions click on this playlist here and i'll see you in the next video bye